Hello and welcome to another upload. I am Neil, but before we start this one folks, after spending roughly 12 months actively in the Facebook and Twitter groups to get first-hand research and understanding within the Flat Earth community, mainly to see where we're at in 2018 after the mini Flat Earth revolution a few years ago, I engage with both parties by commenting and memeing etc every single day for almost a year of dedicated free time people. Now I have come to the consensus that even some flat earthers don't even really know what's going on a lot of the time. So much fuzzled information bits here and there, snippets of truth if you will, the same sort of information circling over and over and the same questions keep coming up over and over. No matter how many times that they get answered, around and around we go. Now, I feel as though some flat earthers don't even have a sense of humor. Two fellow flat earthers, don't they seem to realize that we are actually on the same team? And that's before you get hounded by the globalist trolls for giving perfectly good answers to questions regarding the shape or regarding the sun or genuine flat earth science. They even team up in gangs to discredit the information provided by credible sources of that information. You close one down and then another two pop up. It's sort of like that whack-a-mole game. So I had this very cool idea. We could make another game, but instead of using a coin operated machine, it's a mobile app. We can call it Globe Whacked or Whack the Globe, you know, something like that. There's already an app called Whack a Globe, but that's completely different to this idea. So instead of moles to hit, they would be globes to smash. Multicolored flashing globes that break like glass, different levels of different speeds, catchy jingles, etc. It could actually be really fun. So get in touch if you like it, or if you want to get involved with that. Remember, you heard this here first, so it's a, a patented idea, folks. Now, in mostly every single Flat Earth group on Facebook, there are die-hard trolls lingering and waiting for that genuine on-the-fence believer with those genuine honest questions. Suddenly, they are pounced upon like a pack of hungry wolves waiting and hunting for weak prey in the night, typing faster than their little fingers can type or swipe, trying to make the flat earth look unscientific and unrealistic. They are even in groups that have nothing to do with the flat or the globe earth theories anyway, and that's how big this deception really is on social media. I mean, try it yourself. You post something genuine regarding the flat earth on your social media accounts and see what happens. This is the beauty of free will. We all have our own opinion. You're watching mine right now. But you have to figure this out in your own time. If you are genuinely interested in seeing the earth with new eyes, it must be on your terms, your grounds. So take the time to research the questions that may help with your awakening. Try to avoid groups and figure this out for yourself. It is the ultimate feeling of self-satisfaction. A definition of a good teacher, folks, is getting all of the students to understand what you're saying on the topic at hand not just one or two because some people pick things up quicker than others it's the only way to break free from the globe indoctrination and you still have time to do this above all though try not to be ignorant to the fact that most people and i do mean this folks most people are not willing to see what your actual eyes see which is a flat stationary earth. 
they cannot accept the earth is not a spinning globed rock or toilet that is spinning at a thousand miles an hour at the equator and hurtling 67,000 miles an hour around another ball of intense heat. Once you go flat, you can never go back. <laughs> so I must say before we begin, before we begin this upload on the moon, I may even have a few questions that you have not heard before. So this video comes with a warning. What you are about to watch may cause cognitive dissonance. So you have been warned. Now the moon, what do we really know about this magnificent orb of the night and sometimes day, this heavenly body of cold majestic beauty. I'm Nibi, in character now, it's time to get real comfy and let me thank you for joining me, listening to me and to all the new recent subscribers to the channel, a very big thank you for subscribing, welcome to you too and I always try and wish you happy thoughts and good luck every day. Now the moon, a 30 mile wide disc shaped luminary only two to three thousand miles from earth as simply measured by sextants and plane trigonometry throughout history similar to the sun on the plane earth the majestic moon is largely transparent because you can observe stars through its surface and that is a fact she is completely self-luminescent shining her own light source not actual terra firma, certainly not a ball so-called planet reflecting the sun's light rays from 238,000 miles away. In all fairness, still very much a mystery to modern science and astronomers. Some people out there still believe they actually landed on it, had a nice cup of tea and biscuits, started playing golf and cruising around on doom buggies. Hmm, do you still believe we went to the moon? Absolutely love that song. Please go and check that one out. How can a grey ball, folks, reflect the sun's light on its whole surface anyway? It's grey for a start, not really the best colour for reflectivity. Here is another question for you to ponder over, folks. Why wasn't the moon ever lit up when the boys from NASA were playing golf and chilling and relaxing off. Now I've never heard of this before within the community or on mainstream platforms. I mean, does this make sense to you? We are told to believe the moon is bright enough to cause light reflection on the ocean's surface as we can observe every single night, but single-handedly failed to light up once when man supposedly landed on it many times in fact spent many days many nights there but it never happened apparently the moon didn't even start glowing anyway till the apollo missions boosted back in 1977. the fact is folks that the sun and moon's reflections on water always form a straight line path from the horizon to the observer. This proves the Earth cannot be a bald tilted spinning rock. If the Earth's surface was curved, it would be impossible for the reflected light to curve over a ball from horizon to observer. Impossible folks. And here's why. Try and visualize this. Here are some examples, but also try and imagine the sun and moon's straight line reflection on an always flat water surface. Okay? This is the exact same manner in which car headlights have a straight line reflection on an always flat concrete surface on a rainy day. Do you see what I mean? You can clearly see it is not a mere similarity or coincidence, this is an exactitude. 
as you can see, the moon does not reflect light from the sun. You can use a temperature gauge to prove this. Sunlight is warming gold and yellow and moonlight is cold white purplish. Also, yellow and purple are opposites on the colour spectrum. Eclipses. It is alleged by the learned, the powers that be, that when a lunar eclipse occurs, the Earth casts a shadow on the Moon by intersecting the light of the Sun. The shadow, it is alleged, is circular, and as only a globe can cast a circular shadow, then that shadow is cast by the Earth, so of course then the Earth must be a globe. Hmm. Well, let's put that to the test, folks. Eclipses happen with precision in 18-year cycles. So regardless of geocentric or heliocentric beliefs, eclipses have been accurately calculated independent of such factors for many, many millennia, folks. There has been over 50 documented cases where the sun and moon have both been seen with the moon eclipsed and the earth was not between, or they could not have been seen and recorded. The shadow said to be on the moon could not possibly have been cast by the Earth as refraction is charged with raising the moon above the horizon when the moon, it is said to be beneath the horizon. So this is how folks refraction acts in regards to a shadow. This is how we can understand it easily. Refraction can only exist where the object and the observer are in different densities, okay? So if a penny or a coin be put in the bottom of a glass and observed, there is no refraction at all, is there? Refraction casts the image of the penny upwards, but the shadow always downwards. If a basin be taken and put near a light so that a shadow will shorten inwards and downwards, place a rod in the basin and allow it to rest. Then add water and you will see the rod will appear to be bent upwards and not downwards. So this places the matter beyond all dispute, well, in my eyes anyway this proves that it is out of the range of possibility that the shadow said to be on the moon could be that of the earth simple science folks testable repeatable and measurable now as we said since about the 15th century at least 50 eclipses have occurred while the sun and moon have both been visible above the horizon so I would encourage you to check those out and see what you come up with the next time that you think a lunar eclipse is proof of a globed Earth. The fact this has happened more than once on actual record raises so many serious questions about the globe Earth model regarding the types of eclipses, lunar and solar. And that is why it is a pipe dream. When we observe the moon, she is almost identical in size to the sun. Nobody really knows the exact shape of the sun or moon, but what we see are two equally sized equidistant circles tracing similar paths at similar speeds, but one slightly slower over a flat stationary plane, which by all means, is a truly remarkable coincidence because in the heliocentric model considering how far apart and how much smaller the moon is compared to the sun remember the sun is meant to be 865,374 miles in diameter and 92 million 955,807 miles from the Earth. The Moon, said to be 2,159 miles in diameter and 238,900 miles from Earth. So, to make the Moon fit the heliocentric model, 
they just reverse its observed direction from east to west to west to east and change its speed from about 64,000 miles per hour to about 2,200 miles an hour. Very simple to work out, but very effective indeed, as we well know. They want us to believe that the moon's rotation is perfectly synchronized with its orbit. And that's the reason why we only see the one side of the moon rather than conclude the obvious plain fact folks that the moon is simply not rotating at all as you observe it circles mysteriously on a sort of electromagnetic ring field if you will around the stationary earth remember folks they had to slow down the moon's speed by 58,870 miles per hour and reverse its direction to west to east to successfully sell this phony heliocentricity system to a very gullible public. I don't think that there is one person in many, many millennia, regardless of education or understanding, who knows that the Copernican model had to turn the moon's actual observable direction around and give it a brand new speed to accommodate the recorded phases and eclipses. And you can take that to the bank. <laughs> now the eight phases of the moon folks, remember can be seen during the day because the moon moves that little slower than the sun on her trajectory around the plane. The sun circles the earth in 24 hours and the moon circles the earth in 24 hours and 50 minutes. Thus, a complete lunar cycle is composed of 28 days, that is 28 days of 24 hours each, for that is when the sun and moon align again, every 28 days. She is visible, we can see her during the day depending on time, date and location. Here is a picture I personally took of her during her phase two the other day. I did try to get both in it on, you know, at the same time. You can sort of see it. And it really is amazing to see during the day, the sun and moon. We only ever see the one side of her. So there is no such thing as a so-called Terminator line on the moon. This is just nonsense. Just like the so-called Terminator line for the bald earth they are both not real and certainly more importantly not observable we see we observe eight phases on the moon of the moon and they are as follows phase one the new moon the side of the moon that is facing the earth is not lit up at this time genuinely or generally the moon is not visible phase two waxing crescent a small part, less than half of the moon, is lit up at this point. The part that is lit up is slowly getting bigger. Phase 3. The first quarter. One half of the moon is lit up at this point. The part that is lit up is slowly getting bigger. Phase 4. Waxing kibbles. At this time, half of the moon is lit up. The part that is lit up is slowly getting bigger. Waxing means to slowly get bigger. Phase five, the full moon. The side of the moon that is lit facing the earth, the entire moon is lit up at this point. Phase six, the waning gibbous. The moon is not quite lit up all the way. The part of the moon that is lit up is now slowly getting smaller. Waning simply means to slowly get smaller. Phase seven, the last quarter. Half of the moon is lit up. The part that we can see lit up is now slowly getting smaller. And finally, phase eight, the waning crescent. Only a small part of the moon is lit up at this point and it is getting smaller by the minute thus completing her eight mysterious phases of the cycle. Phenomenal. Maybe now it's time. 
we work out the phases of the sun. What do you think? They are the two great luminaries of this beautiful, but sometimes cruel stationary earth. The magical, mystical orbs of the nocturnal and diurnal. The greater luminary to rule the day and the lesser luminary to rule the night. The light of the sun is electromagnetic and the light of the moon, well, she's electric. Thank you very much indeed for watching this upload. Tap the sub and knots if you're finding me for the first time and we will catch up on the next upload. You take care and stay safe. Thanks for watching.